Hi everyone, we're going to look at how to calculate the confidence interval for the population mean. Now where students go, typically they go wrong, is in finding, using the wrong table, the computation. Now the confidence interval for the population mean, you take the sample mean, which I've denoted by x bar, plus or minus c, now this value c I'm using the notation to denote that it's from a table. Now the table will be from the t table or the z table and this is what we're going to be discussing in this video. And then we times the standard error. This which table we use is important and this is the bit where students make mistakes. So first I'm going to start out with a bit of detail and then I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible but obviously I will lose detail in doing so. Okay, which table do we use, Z or normal? First, ask ourselves a question. Is the random variable in question, the original random variable, normally distributed? Note here that I'm talking about the original data, say X, and not the sample mean. I'm not asking whether the sample mean is normally distributed. I'm asking whether the original data is normally distributed. Original variable is normally distributed. The answer is going to be yes or no. In either case we ask next ask a question is the population variance known? Let's take uh, this channel here. So is the normal is the original data normally distributed to say yes? Then the next question is is the population variance known? If the answer is yes we use the z table done if it's not we use we replace the sigma square which is unknown by the estimate which is the sample variance and then we use the t table with n minus 1 degree of freedom okay and in doing this we calculate the exact confidence interval Sometimes you'll see in the question they ask you for the exact confidence interval. If that's what it says somewhere in the question, it's basically meaning that your data are normally distributed and yes, your data is normally distributed. Right, let's go over to the other side. Say that my original data, my original variable is not normally distributed. Again, we ask the question, is the population variance known? If the answer is yes, then if n is large, we use the z table. If the population variance is not known, we ask ourselves the question, is the sample size n large? If the answer is yes, we use the z table. If it's no, we use t table with n minus 1 degree of freedom. Now, note in this case that we only get the approximate confidence interval for the population mean as opposed to the exact. What that means is that the exact is, as the name suggests, it's the precise one. Approximation is basically kind of you're just guessing, uh, you're doing a good guess. right? Now two things to come out of this side, because this side is a bit more complicated, where, where the data is not normally distributed, and that is, first of all, what happens if the population variance is known but n is not large? Well, in that case, if you use z, the z will not be a good approximation, will not provide such a good approximation for the confidence interval for the population mean. But the bigger the n is, the more reliable it will become. Okay. Next, you're obviously wondering, well, what is meant by large? What is large? How big is large? Now many of you will have read in textbooks or have been told in lectures that n bigger than 30 is large. All right. Where this comes about is because we are using something called the central limit theorem, which I ain't going to go into today. But uh, yeah. So it's been found that if n is bigger than 30, it could work well. Let's stop there. For let's pause there. What I'm going to say next, in the next uh, couple of minutes, you can ignore. This is only for you who are a bit more interested about this n bigger than 30. Well, n bigger than... I'm going to start now. 
Okay, n bigger than 30. Okay, where do we get this 30 from? So it's been found in experiments that n bigger than 30 can the approximation can work well, but actually how big is big depends on the distribution of the original data. Okay? So remember that the first question we'll ask is is the variable normally distributed? All right? Now if it if it is that your variable is not normally distributed but it's still symmetrical and it's almost normal, then in fact the sample size doesn't have to the n doesn't have to be so big to be big. Whereas if your original data is very very unsymmetrical, really far from normality, such as if it's very very skewed, like here, like very positive skew, our n will actually be quite have to be quite big to be big, if you know what I mean. So in this case, that if it's like this, n around 30 wouldn't be enough. In fact, it's been found that you probably need something higher, like 50 or more. All right. So that is where these this uh, this thing about big comes in. It depends really on what is big depends on how uh, far from normality our original data is to begin with. Okay. Right, the rest of you can rejoin us now. Okay, now, so we've kind of, I've kind of presented this to you, um, which table we use, so it's either T or Z. Now, can I kind of distill all this? If you just wanted it really, you know, really nuts and bolts. Well, it's like this, I think. It depends on two things, N and sigma square. Now is the population variance is known or unknown and n is it large or small? So if n is large sigma square known we use the z. If n is large we, sigma square is unknown we still use the z. If sigma square is known we're always going to use the z irrespective of uh, n is large or small and if sigma square is unknown we use a z if n is large and tn minus 1 if n is small. But note in creating this table I have kind of uh, omitted the important fact that the variable x is it normal or not normal because that will tell us whether we get an exact confidence interval or approximate confidence interval. Now let's apply let's have a look at some examples. First question a random sample of 20 from normal distribution with variance of 16 gives a sample mean of 50. Find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, which table do we need here? T or normal? Okay, well, is the variable, is the data normally distributed? Yes, because we said right here. Is the population variance known? Yes, because it's this is the, is it with, you know, this is the notation and 16 is the population variance. So we use population variance is known Respective of what n is, then we use the z. Second question. Scores from an aptitude test is known historically to follow a normal distribution with standard deviation of 5. Okay, find a confidence interval for the mean score. Now, is the data normally distributed? Yes, we're told that. This variance is the population variance known. Well, here we've just told with a standard deviation of 5. How do we know whether that's correspond to the population or the sample? Well, we get the answer by looking at this phrase here. It, it test is known historically. Now, when it says known historically, that basically tells you it's the population. So we are told what the population standard deviation is. So we must know what the population variance is. is. It will be 25. So we know that we are here. Population variance known, so we're going to use Z table. Specifically, since n is 10, it's small, uh, variance known, n is small, so we're right in this cell, z. Finally, the travel times to college for the first year, college students is normally distributed. In a, normal, in a random sample of 14 students, the mean travel time is 35 minutes with a standard deviation of 3 minutes. Okay, find the competence interval for the population mean. Right, is the data normally distributed? Yes, we're told that. Okay. The standard deviation of three minutes, is that a population one or a sample one? Well, we will see, can see that it is the 
sample one because it is computed from a random sample of 14 students in other words it is not done from the pop it's not computed from the pop all the students anything computed from the random sample will will be a sample statistic so here we have a the sample standard deviation hence we'll know what the sample variance is it'll be square of 3 which is 9 okay so we are uh, population variance um, unknown here so what is n is that large or small We've got 14 students well 14 is way less than 30 so we have sigma squares unknown and sample size is small so we use t with n minus degree of n minus 1 degree of freedom since n is 14 the degree of freedom will be 13 done okay well I hope that kind of helps you with getting the uh, using the correct table when you're going about computing the confidence interval for the population mean. I'm Phil, your statistics mentor.